Welcome to Strange, revealing strange stories of the paranormal, bizarre coincidence, and unexplained phenomena. I'm Chris Batchelor. Thank you for listening. You can find out more about Strange Podcast and connect with us on Facebook and Twitter by visiting strangepodcast.com. In this episode, we investigate the very strange case of the man they could not hang. In 1885, a convicted killer suddenly became a legend. Sentenced to death for the murder of his employer at a home on Babacan Beach, John Lee mysteriously survived three attempts to execute him at Exeter Prison. Having placed a noose around Lee's neck, the hangman pulled the lever to release the trapdoors beneath the prisoner's feet, but the doors refused to open. Amazingly, Each time Lee was led away, the apparatus was tested and found to work perfectly. On Saturday the 15th of November 1884, elderly spinster Emma Keyes was brutally murdered at her home known as The Glen at Babacan Bay, South Devon, England. Her throat was slit, she had three wounds to her head, and the murderer had also attempted to burn her body. There had also been an attempt to destroy evidence by setting the Glen alight, starting various small fires around the property. The murder of Emma Keyes was particularly violent, and the crime sent shockwaves not only around the local community, but became an international news story. A shocking and sad tale of an innocent elderly spinster brutally murdered at her beautiful seaside home. However, this strange Victorian murder mystery only gets more mysterious. Babacombe Bay is an idyllic spot located under cliffs in Tor Bay, South Devon, England. Today there is a winding road leading down to a stunning beach and small seafront. However, in 1885, Emma Key's home would have been far more difficult to reach isolated and cut off from the rest of the community. Emma Keyes, the victim, had painted a watercolour called The View From My Bedroom Window in 1876. You can see this image in the show notes at strangepodcast.com. The man arrested and accused of this atrocity was her employee, 20-year-old John Lee. He was born on the 15th of August 1864 at Elm Cottage in the village of Abbots Kurzweil. After leaving school, he worked as a servant at the Glen. In 1879, he realised an ambition to become a sailor when he joined the Royal Navy. Invalided out of the Navy three years later following a serious illness, John worked as a boot boy, cleaning shoes for guests at the Royal Dart Hotel in Kingsweir. He moved to Torquay and worked as a railway porter at Tor Station before becoming a footman at a nearby Victorian villa. In July 1883, he was imprisoned for six months for stealing from his employer. Lee was accused of the murder, however all the evidence proved to be circumstantial. Lee was apparently the only man in the Glen at the time of the murder a strange cut on his arm that he couldn't account for, and his previous criminal record and time in prison. This was all enough, in the eyes of the law, to find Lee guilty. Lee denied that he'd killed Emma Keyes. He tried to blame his half-sister, Elizabeth Harris, who was the cook at the Glen, and expecting a baby. Lee told the prison chaplain that she was covering up for her lover, who had visited her on the night of the murder. It's now believed that Reginald Templer, the son of a well-to-do family from nearby Teen Grace, 
a regular visitor to the Glen, was in fact Elizabeth Harris, the cook's lover. It's thought by some that Emma Keyes investigating a disturbance in the house discovered Harris and Templar together. This is when the murder took place. This of course is a popular theory and has never been proven to be true. John Lee was held at Exeter Prison, tried and found guilty of the murder. Lee was sentenced to death by hanging. Nights before the execution was scheduled to take place, John Lee claimed that he dreamed the execution would fail. Strangely, on the day itself, that is exactly what happened, and not once, but three times. John Lee, now known as John Babacombe Lee, was led to the gallows. His face was covered and noose placed around his neck. A large crowd of spectators had gathered to witness what they'd believed to be justice taking place. As Lee stood on the trap doors, the executioner pulled back the lever, but the doors failed to open. Lee was taken away and the trap doors were tested. They worked perfectly. Lee was again led to the gallows, expecting now to meet his fate, but once again the trap doors remained firmly shut. This sequence happened a total of three times. Many people believe that God had intervened to save an innocent man. Superstitious folk believed that a witch had cast a spell on the gallows. Rumours also persisted that the real murderer had bribed the hangman to bungle the execution. Closer to the truth, though, were claims that the scaffold had been fixed during carpentry work carried out by convicts. However, prisoners did not make the trap doors which, upon closer inspection, were found to be too thin. They bent and jammed the mechanism when the man's weight was placed upon them. Instead of dying on the scaffold, John Lee served life imprisonment. Released in 1907, he was treated as a celebrity and sold his life story to a national newspaper. He capitalised on his moment of fame by giving talks and making public appearances. Lee married in 1909. He went abroad two years later, abandoning his wife while she was expecting their second child. John Babacombe Lee's whereabouts remained unknown. Several unconfirmed reports of his death were received from America, Australia, Canada, and many parts of England, thereby creating a further unsolved mystery about John Babacombe Lee, who's now known as the man they could not hang. If you'd like to make comment on what you've heard in this episode, you can on the episode page at strangepodcast.com. There you'll also find interesting links to the resources and evidence featured in this episode. Don't forget you can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter by going to strangepodcast.com. Until next time, thank you for listening. Listening.